This lesson is part of a course at Programming Electronics Academy. If you'd like to get access to the full course and all the materials related to this training, check out Programming Electronics Academy, where you can get access to all of these lessons and all of the coursework we offer. I hope you find this extremely helpful. Well, before we dive in, I'd really appreciate if you could take a moment and click that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you but a click, but it really helps us grow our YouTube channel and bring you great content like this. Hi, hope it's going well. All right, so now we're gonna move into this next phase of this project, and that is getting our device information to actually send data over Wi-Fi to our phone. And we are gonna use an application, a service called Blink. It's B-L-Y-N-K, you just go to blynk.io, so blink.io, and you're gonna to come to this website and you're gonna click start here. You're gonna go through the sign up process. So once you do that process and sign in for the first time, it opens up this screen. It's called Blink Tour. Now, when I was investigating this, I just was like, I don't care about this stuff, so I skipped. And I realized, well, actually, man, I really kind of wanted to, uh, to check that out. So let's say that was accidentally closed. All you do is go down to this little life raft and then you go to Blink Tour. And what we're gonna do is just kind of walk through this to kind of give you an idea of what this whole Blink thing does. So Blink is a tool that helps you bring IoT projects online. There's a lot of people using it. That's kind of why we decided to go with Blink. It went through a huge change recently with some of their code base and the whole structure of the website and that kind of thing in the app. But there's a very active community associated with it. And what Blink is gonna allow us to do is send information from our device to our phone and also to a website console, which you'll see here shortly. Now there's lots of companies like Blink that provide IoT as a service. This IoT infrastructure as a service, Arduino actually has one of these and I think Adafruit has one. There's all types of them out there. And they have different pricing plans most of them have a free version. Blink has a free version. You're able to get two devices up for free. That's similar to Arduino IoT. You're able to get two devices, I think. One thing about Blink is that it's somewhat designed for enterprise applications. So if you come up with some idea and you want to scale that, then I think Blink is pretty well suited for that. So this is a really powerful tool. We're only going to be scratching the surface, but for our intent, I think this is going to be just right. Okay, so let's walk through this. So this diagram, I think, is really pretty stinking helpful, all right? And as we go through these videos, I wanna make sure we're using some of the same words. So when I say a word, you actually know what it means, right? So you've got Blink apps. So the apps are what is gonna run on your mobile device. So either your phone, that could be Android or iOS phone. You know, you download an app on your phone. So when we talk about an app, that's what we're talking about. When we talk about EdgeNet, this is the software. This is basically the Blink library code that runs on your device, like an ESP8266 or an ESP32 or some Wi-Fi enabled device, right? So EdgeNet refers to the software that runs on our device. So when you hear me say device, I'm referring to like our widget. And then we have Blink.Council and that is the web application. And as it says, that's where we are right now. This is where you do a lot of setup, like behind the scenes, I'll call it infrastructure setup so that your devices and your applications can kind of talk to each other correctly. Now, in the center of all these, we see this Blink Cloud. This is basically the server that all the data runs through. And this is what's cool, all right? We can send information from our device to, through the cloud to the phone app. It can also come through and come to the council. We can do something on the phone app that goes to the device and to the council, or from the council to the device and the phone app. Like, these are not all one-way streets. These are all like, communication superhighways, people going both ways, both directions. So this is the basic layout. Again, we've got apps, we've got EdgeNet, and we've got the council. And the cloud is kind of like handled in the background and that's how they're all communicating. You probably know that pretty much everything you do online is getting tracked. From what YouTube videos you're watching to where you're going online, somebody's got access to that. But you may not know how easy it is to protect your privacy, secure all that browsing data, and access content that otherwise wouldn't be available in your location using a virtual private network like private internet access. All you have to do to set up a VPN is sign up, download some software, 
do a super easy install, and that's it. So when you do this and set up your VPN, your internet service provider or the network admin can't log on or store any of your browsing data, and the information is unreadable and untraceable. If you want to get set up with your own VPN through private internet access and support our channel, use the link in the description and you can get 82% off their service plus an extra three months. Just use that link below to set up your own VPN through private internet access. It's super easy and you'll be able to support this channel at the same time. Okay, now I wouldn't spend too much time here, but again, this is a little more for enterprise users, but there's a developer mode and a user mode. Hey, you're a developer, so you're always gonna be in developer mode. And that is the default mode when you first sign in. So you really don't have to worry about this. User mode would be for like, let's say you had thousands of devices deployed at, you know, you've got some company that's monitoring all these different devices and you need people who are gonna like read notifications and that type of thing. That might be like some other employee who's a user who has to, who doesn't have to like write access. Okay, enough on that. Don't have to worry about it. Now this is talking about devices. Again, devices are like your microcontrollers, right? ESP32s, different types of Arduino, something that's got some type of wireless communication. We'll be using an ESP8266 in our example. Now we're gonna get down into the nitty gritty. And this is the part I really want you to pay attention. Hopefully you were paying attention before too. But So these templates are really important. And I want you to think of a template like a cookie cutter. So you might think like, oh, hey, you know, I'm going to make some device and the device is going to do X, Y, Z, you know, maybe, hey, I'm going to make a temperature sensor. It's going to read the temperature. Well, you can make one of those, but then you got to like keep copying that one over and over. And then let's say there's a change, then you would have to make that change to each one of those. Well, to get around that, what they've done is made device templates on Blink. And a device template is like a cookie cutter. Like I said, that is basically where you're going to design your application at in the sense that you're gonna be looking at what different data streams will I be using, like what stuff do I wanna monitor and all that type of thing. And once you've defined your device template, then you can use that to make a bunch of different specific devices, like you know widget one and widget two and widget three. And then you can give those widgets to other people or have them out in the field or you know whatever. And then let's say you're like, oh, you know what? I realize I need to make a change. Well, you make the change to the template and then that flows down into all the different devices. So we're gonna be working quite a bit in templates. It'll make more sense as we do it, but just keep that in mind. It, it can be just a little bit confusing, but you have to remember everything starts with a template. We're gonna be doing most of our work in the template and then we'll create devices from those different templates. Now, a little bit more on templates here. They're going to encompass all types of things for your application. So like the data that gets transferred, those are called data streams is how they're referred to. It's gonna talk about the user interface on your mobile application, the web interface on the console where we're at. It's also gonna handle how notifications are done. So all that's gonna be within the template. And then these features, it just says, you know, some of the stuff we can do. You can like set up notifications, automations. You can, you, you can do all types of really cool stuff to be perfectly honest. Like I said before, we're just gonna be scratching the surface but it gets really pretty neat. And then finally, you know, they do, like I said, they do have different plans. We're gonna be using the free plan, doesn't cost us anything. We get, you know, a couple devices and then I think you get 30 widgets per one. So it's not too bad. I mean, the plus plan isn't too expensive, but anyway, we're gonna be sticking in the free for this. Okay, now what we're gonna do is shift over to the mobile application and I'll just show you how to install that real quick. All right, so I'm on a mobile device. This is an iPhone. This would be the same on an Android, except you, I think you'd be in what, uh, Google Play maybe. And I'm just gonna go search, and I'm gonna search for Blink, not Blunk, but Blink. And here it is, Blink, new I IoT. I won't press their ad, I'll just go ahead and click this. So I'm gonna download it and open it. And I'm gonna log in. And it's gonna give me a little welcome screen too. You know, it's basically gonna same this, say the same stuff. You're welcome to you know, kind of go through this again. Lots about templates. Templates are important, as you'll see, but hey. Okay, so that's that. Now it's gonna try to walk you through this wizard to set up a new device, and you can do that if you want. Um, we're not gonna do it. I'm just gonna jump into some really basic examples first, but it's not a bad idea if you want to to kind of go, go through this, but I'm just gonna close it out. Now, you might be tempted when you see this, right? That big square around add new device. You might be like, oh, I wanna press that. 
because it looks like they want you to, right? But you can't because what do you got to do? You got to create a template. Remember, templates are really important and blank. And besides, hey, we're developers, so you're going to click developer mode. And then it's going to ask us, hey, you got to create a template. But we're not going to do that on the web app. We're going to do that on the council. But right now, we are all set up with blank. We've got our account made. We can log in to the web portal, to the council online and we can also get into our app. If you're really enjoying this uh, Arduino programming stuff, make sure to check out our website, programmingelectronics.com. We have a training program that can really help get you up to speed pretty darn quick learning how to program with Arduino. Also, before you go, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and if you enjoyed the video, please do like it. If you've got some questions, leave them in the comments. We do read them all and try to do our best to answer them. Thanks a ton. Have a great one. Bye.